All right, so in light of the popularity of The Last of Us, I decided to make a cordyceps video. So we got this infected guy over here, and my little guy comes running up. Hey, man, you don't look so good. Oh, dude, what's coming out of your mouth? If you run away, it'll go back. But if you're dumb enough to stand there, it's going to reach out. It's going to get you right in the mouth. Ah, and then you die. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm putting a link in the description for the NPC that I used in the demo. That way you can get it. And then this video, we can do some configuration and I'll do some explanations. So you could modify this for your game if you want. Let's go ahead and hit the green get button and that's gonna put it in your toolbox. Let's go get our infected NPC. We'll go to our toolbox and then under inventory, here it is, infected with cordyceps. I'll click on it. Yup, two scripts. And we're gonna look at both of them. There we go. So the first thing we wanna do is get the animation working for when he's sitting down. When you play the game, he's supposed to be sitting down in kind of a, a sickly position, but it's not going to work under your account because the animation ID was saved under mine. Let's change that. Let's open up our infected. And here's the script for him to sit down, sitting animation script. And that's the animation that we're going to be using. I have it also, the keyframes I have saved under AM saves. Let's go to sitting, right click, and then save to Roblox. You can just go ahead and hit submit. I'm gonna overwrite mine. There we go. That way I don't have a whole bunch of sitting animations. Cool, get this ID. So yours is gonna look the same if you hit the submit. And we could go ahead and hit those boxes, ID copied. Then you're gonna to go to your script, sitting animation script, sitting, and you're gonna paste the animation ID, control V, right there. And now, when you play your game, he should be sitting down. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's play. And there he is. It's kind of sitting down. Oh, and look at the quarter steps are coming out after me. So that part is working all right. Let's go ahead and get the part where when he dies and struggles, that's going to work. See right here? That's not going to work under your account because the animation is saved under mine. All right, now let's get the animation for when he gets infected and he's in the air, he's holding his neck and he's kind of kicking and stuff like that. So under the infected NPC, under anim saves, not the sitting, but the infected, that's the other one. So there's two animations we gotta get going. So let's go ahead and right click, save to Roblox, that's our infected. I'm going to overwrite existing asset. You could hit submit if you don't have it. There we go. Infected. Submit. And we'll get that ID right there. I'm going to close this. And then everything I have for my cordyceps stuff is in the head, right? Because I have it coming out of the head. And everything related to the cordyceps is under this court simple. So we'll open that up. And I actually spawned that to other players that got infected. And with a little bit of modification, I got it working. So you could make this a contagion too. Let's go to the infected animation. We still have our ID. I'll do a control V to paste it. There we go. Now you should have that little kicking animation when your player gets too close and doesn't move and gets infected. All right, so for the strands that come out, I use a beam, right? So if you look under the court simple in the NPC's head, you'll see this beam. I put this attachment ATT0 and ATT1 so I could work on the beam. But in the script, what I do is I clone the face front attachment, right? And that way I do it for both of them. So I make two clones. But this one here... I hit that ATT1, it's great for troubleshooting. You just pull that out. The beam is default attached to ATT0 and ATT1, and then I change it in the script. But that way, we can start working on it. So let's select our beam, because what I'd like to go over is the curvature of the beam. When we had that wag, when, when the strand came out, how did we do that? 
Well, beams can curve based on something called the Bezier curve. And it's not that hard to apply. With the beam selected, we're going to go down to where it says shape. And we have our attachment 0 and attachment 1. Those are the endpoints, right? We have ATT0 and ATT1 selected here or chosen there. But we also have this curve size 0 and curve size 1. And I have 1 in each of those. That means one stud out from the beginning of the beam and one stud back from the end of the beam, we're going to have some points. That's going to help us produce this curve effect. If we go to our rotate, select our attachment, when I rotate it, I'm getting that curve. And it makes a difference where our curve sizes are set. Let's take a look at our beam real quick. Let's make both of those zero and see what happens. All right, now we go ahead and go ahead and rotate it. We get nothing, right? But with values there, we put a one here, see what happens there. Nothing. That's going to affect this, this attachment over here. So if I have ATT0, there we go. So you can do the wag on both ends. I was just doing it on this one. ATT1's attachment is curve size 1. That's where the point is for that, for that Bezier curve. Let's select that. Cool. And then in this script, we'll take a real quick look. Court simple. So in the script, I dynamically change my curve size 0 and curve size 1 based on the length. So I take one third the length, and that's where I put my P1 and P2. If you look in the documentation, they refer to these numbers as P1 and P2. But more importantly, how much rotation, you saw me doing the rotation of the attachment, how much rotation do we apply? Well, I have this in a configuration value that you can set, right? So it's called strand bend. If you go to the top, let's take a look at our configurations. This is really where you can start changing some stuff. I have this strand bend right here. And under court simple, I have configuration strand bend. Now this is going to be a random number. I made it random plus or minus whatever is in whatever this value is. This is in radians, so it's like 0.1 radians. That's a very small amount of change. Um, I think 0.5 radians is pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. So that gives you kind of an idea. If you make this too big, let's make it like 0.5 you're going to see some crookedness in our calculations because I just didn't put a lot of time into making the beam. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. I'll leave that attachment there. It won't affect anything. Let's play this. We have a larger value for our strand bend. Let's run up here. And you can see that there's some, some crookedness in there, right? Because there's, there's a little too much bend based on how I did, the, uh, I did the tweening. So keep that number kind of small, or you're going to have to go in there and try and, uh, try and smooth that out a little bit. But like 0.2 would be fine. I have 0.1. Let's try 0.2. Right? Let's hit play. And we'll go ahead and run up. Yeah, see that's kind of a nice smooth curve. You get a little bit of a little bit of a bend in there, a little bit of a kink, but it's not bad. All right, but I, I kept it at point one. I just wanted I didn't want it to be straight out. That's that's what I was going for. So we'll make that point one. And I have a time constraint too. Like if it took me three months, nobody would remember uh, nobody would remember the last of us, right? All right, so I have my search distance. We can set that. So I have it set at 15 studs. When you get 15 studs away from your target, um, it's going to start looking for it. Here, let's move this in so that we don't have that hanging out there when we do our, when we do our test. So let's make this a short number. Let's go to our search distance. And if we make this 5, you got to get really close. All right, so we'll go ahead and play it. 
Oh yeah, run up. There we go. So you can modify that stuff. And if you're curious how I do my search, I've done this in a lot of other videos. I have the find nearest char that I did not too many videos uh, before. And the distance of interest is that value that you're passing in, the, the search distance. I also have this method right here that is looking and that checks to see if you're in front of the person. I do a 60 degree angle on that. I did not make a configuration. You're more than welcome to do that. If I do a control F to look on this, oh, here it is. Uh, I, I just hard coded a 60 in there for 60 degrees. And then we have the number of strands. That's a configuration value. If you want more strands, you can go ahead and go down to number of strands. I have it set to 10. The growth rate is the tween rate. So if you reduce this number, it's going to go faster. I, I should have come up with a better way of phrasing that. But this is the tween rate. So if you look at growth rate, it's up at the top. Right? Growth rate. I just call it rate. Here's growth rate. Rate. Control F for find. And oh, I have it here for the tween value. And the tween value is the speed for which your strand gets from one point to the next. And then the last thing that's kind of cool is the struggle time, right? How long does he struggle before he dies? Let's take a look at that real quick. We have struggle time. I'll do a control F. Let's go search on that. Boom. So struggle time, I play the animation and the animation is looped. So I'll hit that play. He can't walk. He can't jump. Right, can't jump, can't move around. We spawn off a thread so that we're not tying up this thread. And then we wait for the amount of time that we specified in seconds in struggle time. Right, I have it five seconds now. And then we just make the health zero. We reset the is infected. Nobody's infected, so we can infect somebody else. And then I stop the sound. And, th and that's pretty much it. I'm sure that there's probably some funny behaviors in here. But it's relatively solid for being able to do this in a couple of days. Uh, I wish you luck on it. Let me know if you have any questions. Maybe we could break some things out and do some more instructional videos on beams and things like that.